It's a very good question. First of all, a leader is subjective to the individual person, but a leader to me, first of all, is someone who's willing to do what others won't and uplift people and build people and give them direction and uh, in, empower them, encourage them to be their best selves. A leader has to always be willing to do what it takes. And I actually have some little quick notes that I thought I'd share. <clears throat> Uh, one of the tests of leadership is the ability to recognize a problem before it becomes an emergency. I know for me in my business in real estate, there's always going to be problems. That's typical. There's problems with the houses or the properties or the buyers, the sellers. I instinctively anticipate those and prepare everyone for those. Hopefully they don't happen, but you have to be always thinking where you are now, where you were in the past so that you can be where you are now. But where are you going to be in an hour, in a day, in a week, in a month? Anticipating, planning, and preparing. I think that's a very important sign of a leader. Uh, a strong leader accepts blame and gives the credit. A weak leader gives blame and accepts the credit. It's a very different thing. We all make mistakes. Hopefully, the more successful you are, the fewer you make. But to become successful, you have to make mistakes to grow and learn. Uh, I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I do them. And I simply say, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Let's move forward and let's do something better. Or let's fix it or let's learn from this mistake. Um, a leader's job is not to do the work for others. It's to help others how to figure out to do the work themselves. A lot of new people that start with me, they want everything just handed to them. I don't hand it to them. I give them the skills and the tools that they need to learn. Now, of course, when you're new at any business, there's a learning curve. It takes a while to get there to learn how to do those things. But if you have a good leader or mentor with you that will not do it for you, but help guide you how you can use your own brain power and skills to do it yourself, that's a sign of a good leader. Um, a true leader has the confidence to stand alone, the courage to make tough decisions, that's not always easy, and the compassion to listen to the needs of others. That's a very good question. And um, I believe many leaders are naturally born that way. There are some people based on their astrological sign uh, or their birth year, just have different emotional abilities. I do think there is a part of it that is born in your natural abilities. However, leadership can be learned. Anything can be learned. But, you know, you, no matter how much you may want to learn to be a leader, that may not be your forte. Some people are born as artists. I am not particularly, I'm not good at painting or drawing, um, but I'm great at photography, but but I would not ever be, I mean, I'm a leader type, whereas someone who was born as a painter or an artist may not want to be a leader because, because that's just not who they are internally. But I think if it's something you have a desire for, then probably you have some parts of you that are innately bred to be a leader. Then you just have to do the education to learn how to do that. And I will say one of the most important things for me in being a leader is I am continuously involved in education. Um, even though I've been in this business for 32 years, uh, I go to training co courses. Uh, I used to go maybe once a month all around the country, around the world to learn from other great leaders and other successful business people. I teach, uh, like I would go to conferences and I speak and like kind of like this to groups of 5,000, 10,000 people on how to be a leader or how to be successful. I've always said in my talks, you probably heard it before, in my, where I think in life as human beings, we have to be chameleons. I mean, that lizard can be brown, it can be black, it can be green and purple. It adapts to its environment. So we have to always be conscious of our environment and adapt to it. So obviously a brand new intern that's starting here, I have a new one starting in a couple of weeks, moving here from Atlanta. And of course, it's gonna be a little different working relationship in the beginning because he's new to Beverly Hills. He's new to my team and my office and how we do things. So there's going to be a little bit more handholding in the beginning, maybe a little bit more asking him questions of what he needs and what he wants. Hopefully once that first few weeks of the learning curve gets better, he'll be more free to do things specifically with tasks. And that's a very interesting question that no one's ever asked me before. Um, I will say this from my education and learning. What I've learned is as adults, we are primary personalities based on three things that happen in our life. Something happens to us, at an, and these are typically negative things. Uh, something happens to us at an early age, three to four years old, that form formulates who you are. And uh, something that happens in your teenage years, and then something happens in your early adult years. 
Uh, for me, uh, I would say the first thing is when I was young, my parents were divorced when I was quite young. Um, I think I was two or three years old. So um, because in my mind as a three-year-old, my, my father was never there. I never really even knew my father. I had a stepfather and he and I did not get along. I felt I was abandoned. I was on my own. Um, and so I became very independent. Typically when something bad happens as human beings, our, our minds and bodies flip over to be the opposite. So I felt as a child abandoned. So I became very independent and I've always been very independent. And then as a teenager, um, uh, my stepfather and I did not get along. He wanted me to be a regular kid wearing jeans and t-shirts and working at the supermarket bagging groceries. That was not for me. I had a bigger vision of it. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be rich. Uh, I wanted to have a very good life. He did not understand that. So he was always negative towards me. Never once said anything positive. Always, you're no good. You'll never succeed. I mean, my whole life from when I was a kid. But I turned that around. I thought to myself, who are you to tell me I'm not going to be successful? I flipped the switch and I said, I'll show you how successful I'll be. So I think one of the most important things to be a leader is your income and your life will be a combination of the five people you most spend your time with. So be very careful who you spend your time with. You want to spend time with people that are smarter than you, richer than you, more interesting than you, and better than you. Because being with them, you and now you have to contribute to them, but you will elevate yourself. You don't want to be with people that are less than you because you're not going to grow. And, you know, we all have friends from the past that we liked and had fun with, but you're like, I can't be around those people anymore, right? We all have that because maybe they party too much or they just want to fool or whatever the case may be. I'm sure you realize when you're in the environment with them, it's not a good place to be. It's not uplifting. It's not building you. It's not helping you get to where you want to go. So as a leader, I've always put myself in uncomfortable situations around people better than me so that I can learn and grow. And when I was first starting out in real estate, I was you know, 18, 19 years old. I'd go to conferences. I wasn't even selling anything in those first couple of years, maybe one or two sales. But I would go to the top, top brokers if they were speaking, kind of like what Mario does. And I, I said, I'm so impressed by you. I'm so amazed by what you've accomplished. Can I take you out to lunch? Can I you know, talk to you once a week? And they, they would always say yes. And I developed friendships and I learned from them and helped me build and change who I am. When I was first starting out in real estate, my motivation at that point was making lots of money and living a fancy life. I always wanted to live a, a luxury lifestyle. So it was motivated to buy expensive jewelry and cars and travel and all that stuff. Now that I'm almost 53 years old, things, things change in life. So my motivation initially was towards money. Uh, my motivation now is more towards a peaceful, happy life, quality of life, um, spending time with my family and not running the rat race, like just making money all the time and working, working. It's, you know, when you don't have your loved ones around you, then money and success is meaningless. You have to have relationships that you can share with and grow with and be around and love and give love and, and, and receive love. So, so motivation is not money. Of course, I wanted to close, but I, I try not to focus on that because that's not a good thing to focus on. I just focus on giving service, giving help, uh, really helping them make the right decision. And by doing that, the, the, the benefits and the rest will come. Yes, I do like recognition. There's no question. I think everybody does. Uh, I do like that. And it's a nice thing. Um, I'd rather have it than not, <laughs> but, I, but I'm not focusing on the commission. We are motivated by one of two ways. We're either motivated towards pleasure or we're motivated away from pain. Meaning we do things as we want to get away from a painful situation or we do something because we want to get to a positive situation. So, so I think you have to think about there's a, the pain and pleasure. We're, we're all of both, but you have to think about each situation. What's, and think, and take time to think about it. What, what's motivating me to do this? Is it because I want the, the end result and the benefit, or I want to get away from the situation? I don't know. Maybe, maybe you don't have a lot of money, and you're living in a small studio apartment, and it's hard to get by right now, and your motivation is to work hard to get a good life so you can have a beautiful home and a nice car. And, you know, follow what's motivating to you, but, but it's one of those two things. Um, we don't really have a lot of disagreements, knock on wood, fortunately. Um, 
we may have at time differences of opinion, um, but ultimately, I mean, luckily I'm, I run the company and I make the final decisions and they may or may not like it, but I'm paying for it, I do it and I have to make the decision. So, but I always like to hear their input and, and I'm trying to understand where they're coming from and why they think a certain way, but uh, I have to ultimately make all those decisions. Always be truthful, honest, and come from your heart. But you can be truthful and honest in an elegant, gracious way that doesn't hurt people's feelings or offend them. Uh, I mean, you can fire someone, for example, on your team in a gracious way, in a kind way that still, they may be sad or, or upset, but they don't leave with a hole in their heart. So I think you have to really be thoughtful of how you do things, no matter what it is, um, with your family, your loved ones, your coworkers, your employees. Always, always think to yourself, how would I like to get that information that they're going to give me in a, in a gracious, kind, loving, compassionate way? Compassion is very important as a leader, very important. If you all want to be leaders, always be true to yourself and your heart. Always be kind, generous with time, care, compassionate, understanding of other people. Continuously educate yourself and learn. Um, one of my things I learned years ago is from eight o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night, you're working in your business. You're at school, you're working on projects, you're at your job, you're work. But at night, when you're at home from eight o'clock at night till midnight, work on your business, work on yourself. How can I get better? How can I become uh, a better leader? How can I become a better business person? How can I be a better husband or wife or sister or brother or father or what, what or mother, whatever, whatever it is. Think about who you are today and where you want to be in six months, a year, five years, and 20 years. I mean, all of you should be writing down in a letter to yourself dated 20 years from now, a letter stating, wow, it's 2041. I am X years old. I'm married in my beautiful house in Umbria and I've got my two kids or, or whatever. But write a letter to yourself as a little project tonight of where you see yourself 20 years from now and think big and dream. And then now that you have that letter, look at that letter often and then figure, okay, what do I need to do to get from where I am today to be where I want to be in 20 years? Do I need to read more, study more, go to more classes, whatever that is. So just my little closing bit of advice.